Okay. All right. So we're going to finish up uh, just our discussion of this uh, network's update. Okay. I'll just redraw it for the heck of it. Feel free to fast forward if you like. Okay. So. Uh, X1 and X2 feed into Y1 and Y2, okay, and those feed into Z. Z gets uh, a bias theta 3, Z2 gets a bias theta 2, and Y1 gets a bias theta 1. All right, and what do we want? We want that... Um, x1 equals 1, and x2 equals 0, that should imply that z equals 0.2. Okay, we've got a sigmoid as a nonlinearity. Okay, you can look back at the last video if you want to look at all our previous update equations. Ah, what the heck, let's just write them again. y1 equals f of w1x1 plus w3x2 plus theta1 y2 equals f of w2x1 plus w4x2 plus theta2 and z equals f of w5y1 plus w6y2 plus theta3 Cool. All right. And our error, remember in this case, uh, was 0 0.5 minus 0 0.2 squared equals 0 0.09. All right? Because if you plug everything in, in the case where all the wj's are 1 and all our theta j's are minus 1, we get that... Um, C is equal to 0.5, okay? So higher than we want it to. And then the last video we showed how to update W1 using back propagation. Let's um, show how to update W6 and then um, maybe also a bias using back propagation. Okay? So updating W6. W6, we will update using the following equation, okay? We have W6, and we know what R is. We're taking um, R to be just like 0.5, okay? We need to know what this partial derivative is. This is actually easier than the one we took in the last video because we only have to go back um, just to the weights incoming into a Z in order to sort this out, right? So remember last time when we handled W1, right? We had to go through Y1 to get there. Here, let's use a different color maybe purple. We, um, we just want to know uh, how W6 shapes the error, and that directly bears upon Z. Okay, So Z itself is a function of all of these parameters and variables, but you only kind of have to go through one layer of um, function recursion to see W6 show up. Okay, So easier to do that partial derivative, less work, you just have to apply the product rule and dz uh, dw6 shows up there, okay? What is that? Well, dz dw6, we can just look at, you know, the formula for z here. Let me just differentiate that function, f prime of w5 
y1 plus w6 y2 plus theta 3. And the derivative with respect to w6 is just going to be y2. Okay? And remember last time we worked out that f prime of x equals e to the minus x over 1 plus e to the minus x squared. Yeah? Okay. So de dw6, that's just going to be 2 times 0 0.5 minus 0 0.2, okay? Because 2 times z minus 0 0.2 is our de dz, okay? And our um, dz dw6, Right, is going to be um, just f prime of 0 times 0 0.5, okay? And so that's going to give us 0 0.075. And so w6 is equal to 1 minus 0 0.5 times 0 0.075, which is approximately... 0.6963. Okay. Last calculation. Let's do an update of one of the biases. Okay. And let's take, for example, theta 1. Okay. What do we need for that? Well, we know what we need. We need the derivative of e with respect to theta 1. Let's go back here and see what's going on. Let's pick another color, maybe orange. Okay. So here, theta 1 bears upon y1. Okay. So we need to back propagate from z to y1 and then see how theta 1 shapes y1. Okay. So our chain or our chain rule is going to go from the error to z to y1 to theta1. Okay, so that's just what we'll compute. So de d theta1 is just going to be de dz dz dy1 and then dy1 d theta1. Okay, and we can compute all of these things. They end up being 2 times z minus 0.2. That's our first derivative there. f prime of w5y1 plus w6y2 plus theta 3 times w5 times, again that's a times there, f of f prime of y1, or w1, excuse me, x1 plus w3 x2 plus theta1. And then because you just differentiate this with respect to theta1, uh, the derivative of that argument is just going to be 1. So that's all that shows up there. So now we have 2 times 0 0.5 minus 0 0.2 f prime of 0 times 1 times f prime of 0. Okay which is going to be 0.6 times 0.25 squared, <clears throat> which is 0.0375. And our update tells us that theta 1 should be its original value minus the learning rate times uh, the derivative of the error with respect to theta 1 which gives us about minus 1.02, okay? And we could also do this, okay, for w2, w3, w4, w5, okay, theta 2, theta 3. And if we were um, training our neural network, we would want to do that each time, okay? But I'm just going to walk through those three examples because those are representative of all the calculations you do in neural network training. And what you should notice 
is that a lot of stuff here shows up over and over again, okay? This pretty much shows up in every um, partial derivative with respect to a parameter that we took. So um, clever and well-designed software programs for training deep neural networks typically have um, many uh, tricks and sort of organizational techniques for uh, calculating these things only once so that you save time by not computing these functions over and over again. And if you look at the structure of the neural network, you can see that, well, everything's going to kind of go through um, Z. So you're going to compute that almost for every uh, parameter update you do. And, you know, probably about half of your updates are going to go through Y1. Half your updates are going to go through Y2. So that um, provides a way of kind of organizing uh, these uh, partial derivative calculations and can help you save time when you're saving, solving a, 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 or training a large neural network. Okay? Uh, but for our purposes, we're sticking to small ones just so we can really understand them. So um, that's what we have for now. In your homework, you'll um, write some code to train just a two-layer neural network. And I've provided a Jupyter Notebook um, just on the GitHub repository for you to do that. Um, so I hope this tutorial was helpful in getting you started on. Um, it'll be probably problems one and four will be most relevant to um, this tutorial on backpropagation. There's also a couple videos I posted from uh, three blue, one brown, uh, which gives uh, much much better graphics uh, than my than my drawings and um, a pretty tight presentation, and may provide a good supplement for helping you get going on that exercise. Okay. Um, the next video will be on um, uh, why you might expect uh, sigmoids to arise in. Uh, neural networks and why that's relevant for um, sort of extracting statistical features from data. Um, so um, please stay tuned for that next.